about to go work on my dahlias. So if you want to learn what I do to take care of my dahlias in the fall, how to assess the dahlias you have on the ground, prepare the beds, and then digging your dahlias, washing them, bringing them inside, preparing them, and then storing them. First, I think I'm going to go put a sweater on because it is a lot cooler than I thought it was going to be. This past season, I grew a whole lot of new dahlias. I wanted to experiment with new types, a more pom-pom style, and I even bought some at a local nursery that were stunning. But they need to be moved. They're the more permanent place that I will have them for the next two years. It is January. I am super late in taking care of it, but I thought that I'd bring you along and show you exactly what I do to dig out my dahlias. I usually dig my dahlias more in November after the first frost. But the dahlias, you can see, they are super ready to be dug out. It is pretty wet. The ground is soaking, but I'm gonna go ahead and take all of the stakes that were supporting them and then cut them down. If the stalks are really thick, I will be showing you exactly what to do. When they are big in diameter and they're pretty firm, I don't cut them any shorter than 10 or 12 inches. I leave some of it above because of the rain here on zone 8B in the Pacific Northwest, I don't want the tuber to rot. We get an incredible amount of rain and it does really affect the dahlias. I also check all of the labels. I want to know what I'm growing, so I go ahead and make all my labels. One of the things that I like to do is on right on the back of the plant tag is the height of the dahlia because this helps me when I go ahead and place them next year and I don't have to like go back in my list and see how big they grow. The secret to conserve the dahlia tuber through the winter when the stalks are too big, I put aluminum foil on the tuber and that doesn't allow water to go in. And then you mulch the ground really well and they should be okay. So I'm gonna show you how much water those thicker tubes can hold and you really need to do this if you're going to leave them on the ground. The really skinny tubers, I go ahead and cut them all the way down. But as you can see, when I start cutting, if it's rotting and it's really bad, I cut them shorter to where it's a little more firm. And I do that to all of them. Now you can see how much water this Ladia can hold inside and that will rot your tuber. All I do is cover them with a piece of aluminum foil and that really helps. Now pack it pretty tight without breaking the stem. And if you think it's gonna come off and you're nervous about it, you can put a rubber band around it. I try to stay 10 to 12 inches away from the center of the dahlias. I use the shovel, but you can use a peach fork if that makes you more comfortable. It's a lot easier with that. But the shovel has worked fine for me. Take your time and just dig all around the dahlia and it will come off pretty easily. I, I forgot to cut the dahlia down and it's easier if you cut the top off. You can see it comes out so easily and I always grab it from the neck right below because if you grab it from the top you may break something. Look how many tubers grow out of one tuber that I planted. You will have so many plants. Since it rains a lot here, sometimes the stem just disappears. So go dig close to the dahlia, your 10 inches, and then start digging with your hands for the tuber. You will find that the cluster comes right out and you will have a whole cluster of tubers that are very healthy. Once I dig the dahlias, I like to place them on rocks just because when you wash them, it is a lot easier than if you place, place them on your garden bed with the soil. It's just not going to clean well. Or you can do it on the grass. I don't have any grass in my backyard. One of the tours broke, um, but it's okay. It still is viable and I'll talk more about that indoors.
I like to use a pretty strong stream of water to try to clean as much as I can. You don't have to get every single piece of dirt. You'll see indoors what I do, but I try to clean them as well as you can. Look at those small ones. But you will see that when they're very tight, the clusters have so many tours, you cannot get all the way in. But I will go ahead and take care of that when I bring them indoors. I don't like to leave the dahlias out for very long. It is cold and muggy and I just want to get them indoors as quickly as possible. So I just take them all, put them in a bin and carry them indoors. Okay, so we got all of our dahlias ready and they are looking fantastic. I was shocked because it is January and usually with the amount of rain that we had, they would have been in bad shape in the past but they did really well since the temperatures have been pretty mild it's about to snow so i'm glad that i did get them out i'm going to show exactly what i do to clean them up and store them i'm not going to divide them because i will do that in the spring and i'll show you then but in the meantime if you want to learn more about it i will attach in the description below a blog post that i did on how i grow my dahlias indoors if you're enjoying what you are watching and learning please she has not let me work today but i was saying that if you have found this information helpful please go ahead and give it a thumbs up because it can really help the channel i lay out paper towels on my counter i like to put my dahlias out for a couple of days but if your space is really warm or you have a heater near it i would not leave them for more than a day they can dry out pretty quickly this is a great time to inspect your dahlias take a look if anything is rotting or splitting or you damage some of the tubers i look at the necks and look to see if they're very weak like that one looks like it's very weak you can see that it bends very easily that would be one that i would cut away i am using larger pruners but i recommend if you're starting use smaller pruners that way you don't damage any of the other tubers you can see the mother there is the main dahlia that I planted and all the other ones came right after it. So that one I don't use the next season. But again, I'm not dividing the dahlias right now. Dahlias come in different shapes and sizes and you'll see this small one. It may be that one of those or two may be fine to grow next season. Some of your clumps may look very, very full and the soil will stay in between. I have some tubers that are splitting, so I am going to first start by cutting off all of the roots. You're not going to need those, so just cut all the tips of the tubers and cut the stem. Every single stem I cut as short as I can, as tight as I can to the big clump. You can see some of the splitting going on. I don't get rid of them unless I can see that they're very soft because many times they'll dry out and they'll be fine. I'm not gonna use every single tuber anyway. These are way too many for my tiny garden, but I like to have the extras and see how they end up. This is another example of another dahlia where the tubers are much rounder. That's the mother right there. And that one, I will get rid of it and cut it right at the crown there. Just be sure that you don't damage any of the other tubers right next to it. I cut the stem again and then the roots and I'm going to label it. Make sure you put your label. You don't want to end up the next season not knowing what you're growing that has happened to me in the past. Here's the one that came that has the damage. I let it just dry. You can clean it up, but I let it just dry. It still has part of the body, but what is important is that it has the neck that looks nice and firm and the little crown where you're going to get the eye to be able to go ahead and use it next year. So these are the only two tubers that I have left on this specific dahlia, so I am not going to discard it. I'm going to keep it. Just make sure that it is dry, and if you want, you can add some cinnamon to the end to make sure that it doesn't cause any mildew issues or rotting to other tubers. To think that one tuber 
provides you with so many more of these beautiful flowers. I'm going to keep the tubers out for a couple of days so that the soil dries out and then it will fall off. Sometimes I use a brush and brush the extra out before I store it. The way that I like to store my dallas is I use this little craze. They expand, you open them, and I like that they breathe, and I place my dahlias in it. Uh, I use this type of paper. I line the crate. This is the easiest way I've found to store them. I layer all of the paper, and I try to have the dahlias not touch each other so that there's nothing. If one rots on a place, it doesn't touch the other one and rot the other tubers. So isolate each one by placing paper. I keep mine in my bathtub because the humidity is great and it doesn't go above 50 degrees. It's pretty cold in there. But if it's not humid enough where you're at, go ahead and take a mist and just mist the air around it every so often and that will do just fine. Always remember to keep living your dream in that small garden.